Climate change is a huge threat to agriculture. The green population needs more food. But our crops and livestock will suffer. Our best hope is to support peasants and establish food sovereignty. If those farmers think we can survive climate change without agribusiness science, they're just wrong. We need big data and new genetic technologies. And I need food. Hey, I heard what you said after that UN meeting, and I've got a few kernels to pack with you. Like what? Like, peasants are the ones who actually get food to the people who need it. They are the ones who are using food diversity to get us ready for climate change. These big guys are wasting time, money, food, and destroying diversity. Ha, <laughs> give me a break. Look at all these food around us. Look at the diversity. I don't like corporations any more than you do. But they are the ones that have the technology to put the most food on the table. We need to talk. Welcome to the Peasant Food Web. It is the most important food source for 70% of the world. That's made up of the 3.5 billion rural people, 1 billion urban farmers, 800 million people who depend on small-scale fishing and fisheries. It's especially important for people in Africa, Asia and Latin America. Peasants do lots of different things at different times. Some farm and fish, some are also hunters and gatherers, some live in the city part of the year or all year. Sometimes they feed only their families, sometimes they sell to the markets. They grow a lot of food and share it with a lot more people. So, where is agribusiness? Where is the food chain? It's hard for the chain to profit from people who don't have much. Their food barely reaches the rural and urban poor, except for cheap and harmful processed junk. But, if that's true, where does all that food from the chain go? 50% goes to feed livestock, but only 12% of that comes back as animal products. 9% goes to fuel cars. A lot is lost in food processing. And a quarter is wasted on snack foods and soft drinks that are bad for our health. Okay, I understand food waste and unhealthy food, but can peasants really produce that much food? Oh, yes! The peasant food web harvests more than half of the world's total food calories. In cities, more than one-third of meat and more than two-thirds of eggs come from the web. And small-scale fishers harvest a quarter of the global catch. And that doesn't even consider hunting and gathering, which is also really important for lots of people. And peasants feed 70% of the people with less than 25% of agricultural resources. Well, I'm not sure I buy all this, but I'd like to learn more. Stick with me. We are just beginning. Come on, Maria. Let's get out of this industrial monoculture to where peasants grow real food. Ah, this is more like it. Peasants know that diverse landscapes are resilient to heat waves and other impacts of climate change. Peasants use and protect 100 times more biodiversity than the industrial chain. Speaking of diversity, I've never seen a banana so colorful and tiny. Why haven't I seen this before? It doesn't travel or store well, so you have to eat it fresh. There are hundreds of banana varieties that you have never seen. Peasants have nurtured more than 7,000 crop species like this and have bred and shared over 2 million crop varieties. Okay, so what does the chain produce? The chain doesn't want to mess with diversity. It focuses on a couple dozen crops and has patented only 100,000 plant varieties. But get this! The big companies spend almost half their research budgets on one commercial species, maize. 
and this getting worse. The genetic diversity has dropped by three quarters since the 1960s and the nutritional value of crops has declined by about a third. Fewer choices of worse food. Give me a break. Oh, hello there. Who are you? This is an ox, one of more than 34 livestock species that peasants have domesticated along with almost 9,000 unique breeds. The chain, surprise, surprise, only works with five species and less than 100 breeds. And don't get me started with fish. Peasants will often fish and farm. They harvest at least 35,000 different species of freshwater and marine fish. Industrial tollers go after a few hundred, but concentrate almost entirely on just five species and leave a lot of damage in their wake. The chain is betting our future on so few species. And they are leaving us on shaky ground. The chain is destroying the crop and livestock genetic diversity that peasants have nurtured and that the world needs to survive climate change. Forest diversity is crucial to peasant people as they make use of 80,000 forest species for food, fuel and medicine. These areas are being clear-cut by the industrial chain just to make paper and construction materials, grow livestock feeds and export meat and dairy products. The bees and birds that pollinate our crops need diverse landscapes too. Not to mention that the chain's herbicides and pesticides wreak havoc on soil microbes and other important species. The food system is so intertwined with ecosystems and communities, we have to protect it from the chain. Wait till I show you how much the chain is costing the world. Welcome to the industrial food chain. I'm going to show you just how wasteful and expensive it is. Get ready for some math. I'm ready. People, the chain calls them consumers, pay seven and a half trillion dollars to the food chain every year. But 3.8 trillion dollars of that food goes to waste. It's either thrown out or overeaten. The chain's food production incurs a lot of social, environmental and health damages. $4.8 trillion every year, to be precise. This cost is on top of the $7.5 trillion that people pay for food. So get this, the chain's real bill is $12.4 trillion. Wow, that is five times the world's military spending. And wait a second, if you add up all the waste and damages, for every one dollar people spend on food they eat and need, it costs us two dollars to clean up the chain's mess. Exactly, the bill for those damages is never really paid. But money isn't the best way to judge the chain's damages. The chain accounts for 90% of agriculture's fossil fuel usage, 75% of the agricultural land, and it uses most of the world's fresh water. Coca-Cola uses as much water every year, directly and indirectly, as 2 billion people use for their personal needs. The chain violates all kinds of human rights to get what they need. Many peasant communities are forced by the industrial chain to abandon their lands and emigrate to cities or labor on the chain's plantations. When people lose their land, they lose their knowledge and their culture. They lose the critical knowledge that the whole world needs to adjust to climate change. 
It's terrible that the chain causes all this damage to feed only 30% of the people. But we are so entrenched in this system, isn't it too late to change? It's a huge challenge. But we've made big changes to our food system before. Let's go see some of the solutions peasants are proposing. Maria, when you go back to your UN meetings, remember that the peasants are the ones who innovate. They protect biodiversity and soil and water and don't pollute the planet. Remember how efficient the peasant food web is, using just 25% of the land to feed 70% of the people. Remember how much food and money the industrial food chain wastes and the damages it causes. Peasants can grow enough food and people can have enough to eat if their rights are respected and policymakers get the rules and regulations right. We can survive climate change, but we have to work fast. So what do peasants need to scale up? Ask her. Scale up? We are already feeding 70% of the world, but we could do a much better job if the chain got off our backs. Governments must recognize our rights to our land and seeds, support us to sell in local markets, support fair, peasant-led rural development and trade policies, and dismantle the chain. If we get land and rights, peasants can adapt agriculture to climate change. Throughout history, all over the world, we've adapted our crops and livestock from mangroves to mountaintops, quickly and under amazingly difficult conditions. We can do it again. If policymakers like you listen to the people who really grow food, we could start working together. Yes, most policymakers haven't seen what you've shown me. Let's go. I'll tell them myself. <laughs>